I was, we will. End of sophomore year. Yeah, so I guess I was 14, you were 15. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> The first day of school, walking to the bus stop. I remember watching her walk down the street, and it was just, oh, she's pretty. <laughs> it took a while before I got up the courage to talk to her, but we slowly started a friendship just on the bus. About two weeks after Ryan graduated from college, we got married. And then when we found out that I was pregnant with our daughter, the first word out of Brian's mouth was Aria. And then as my pregnancy progressed, something went wrong. Aria had developed a tumor in her right lung. And because of how sick she was, it caused me to get sick. We had to deliver her in order to save me. After her birth, the doctor let us hold her, and she was moving around a little bit. We were just taking turns giving her kisses and telling her that we loved her and that she was beautiful. By the time they uh, came in to check her heart, we had a little over an hour with her. I could feel her saying goodbye. And then she was gone. It took about two weeks after Aria was born for me to realize that she was not coming back. The mundane and normal parts of life became very overwhelming. One day, I was making a cup of coffee. My legs gave out, and I just collapsed on the floor. I just didn't get out of bed. I didn't eat anything, because it's not going to bring her back. Over time, I started seeing a counselor regularly. I was writing about my experiences with grief. I was connecting with other grieving moms. Right around her first birthday, I was really kind of feeling a certain level of peace. But it was very difficult for Brian because he didn't have as many outlets for support as I did. It felt like I was thrown back into the world and I immediately had to act like I was okay. I just wanted to be able to just say her name, but there was nowhere that I could go to talk about it. I couldn't escape feeling alone and unable to connect. He felt so distant, and as he started to go more into his shell, I really started fearing that I had lost the man that I married. I just wanted desperately something to connect to. I think I just thought it was never going to happen. One night, I was scrolling through social media, and I saw this picture of this adorable dog. Her name was Lana. I kept thinking, maybe if we got a dog, it could help him connect in some way. I tapped Brian's shoulder, and I said, hey, they're having an adoption event tomorrow morning if you want to go. And he's like, oh, I don't know. The next morning, he woke me up at 7 AM and said, come on, let's go. We got to go. And I'm thinking, what? Go where? And he's like, the adoption event. Lana was a stray. She had ringworm, mange, was underweight. She was in really bad shape. I remember when I looked into her eyes, it felt like she saw through me and she saw my vulnerability. I think that's really what made me feel like, OK, this, this is my dog. I could tell that they had formed this connection almost instantly. And then there's a girl who's asking if she can fill out an application for Lana. And immediately, Brian was like, we need an application. The first day we got Lana home, 
It just felt good to sit there and be there with her. It was the first time I felt like we as a family were happy in the moment. When Lana came into our lives, we really saw how emotionally connected she was. There was just this immediate sense that she knew what was going on and knew what we needed. The biggest shock is how much relief that gave me to be able to love and take care of someone. She's, I think, allowed me to really finally acknowledge the emotions that I'm going through. With Kim, I'm able to joke around. We're able to just laugh and even making dinner before it felt like a chore, but now we're able to just enjoy those moments together. When we first got Lana, I don't think she felt like she had a home yet. And it was amazing to watch that change where she's now a playful, rambunctious puppy. She now has the ability to just relax. The only thing I want is to make sure she's got the best life she can have. I remember texting our family after we had gotten Lana, and I just said, this dog has completely saved him. Her coming into our home and the way that she has changed us has been nothing short of a miracle. Every day, I, I still wake up and always think about how Arya's not here. That grief is always a part of everything we do. But I think with Lana, the gift she's given me is the ability to say, being happy doesn't erase Arya's memory. Grief is just love with nowhere to go. And Lana's given us a place to put that love.